Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling for October 18th, 2012. And I personally found the show to be kind of average. Had some okay matches, but Devon vs. Sting, just... That doesn't do anything for me, really. I mean, Devon being in the Aces is one thing, but then you're going to have to have all these Devon matches. And I have no problem with Devon, but at this point in his career, same thing with Sting. I just don't really need to see that. And for that to be the main event of the show, just... I don't know. It, that match just dragged on. So, they show some highlights from Bound for Glory with... Rude versus Storm, the Aces and Eights match, Hardy winning the title. I was thinking Bully Ray could still be involved in this. I do think he's still involved in this. And he's really just trying to earn the trust of Hogan and Sting to eventually turn on them. And he had Devon put him through the table as a way to make the loss believable in order to give the Aces full access. So it was all planned out. I was thinking that's somewhere they could go with this, but um, I do think Bully Ray is still involved. So. The Aces arrive, Devon's not with them, they come to the ring, and they play this video, um, some more Aces, and they're talking about how they have a new member, Devon's been patched in, and Devon comes out. And the fans are actually cheering for him at first, they're saying we want Devon and stuff. He kind of reminds me of Martin Lawrence and Wild Hogs, uh, just because he stands out so much because he's the only black member of the Aces and Eights. And Devon is wearing the Sergeant at Arms patch. He tells the fans to shut up, which does get him some booze. And he says the Aces have always had his back. They're going to destroy TNA. He attacked Bully Ray because he didn't forget about what Bully Ray did to him. And this is his payback, and the fans actually chant, Bully's better, which I thought was funny because they always chant the opposite of Bully Ray. But Sting comes out, he's got Bully with him, Chavo, Angle, Styles, Joe. They all come out, they get into a big brawl. Hogan comes out and he says that full access means the Aces have to fight. And Sting wants to fight Devon. And Hogan says that if Devon doesn't accept, then he can just get out. So, full access puts... This was kind of confusing to me. I guess Full Access puts them on the roster now. So, they have to wrestle. I'm just trying to make sense of this. But, to me, if the Aces and Eights are on the roster, then isn't Sting the asshole for starting the fight? I mean, Sting came out with the TNA roster and just beat these guys up when they haven't done anything wrong yet. So, if they're on the roster, then really Sting's the one who started this whole mess. So, at least tonight, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm, just, I'm tired of trying to figure this crap out. This whole full access thing. So, anyways, Devon versus Sting is the main event. We get the celebration for Jeff Hardy tonight. Austin Aries says he will be there. Backstage, Hogan tells Anderson that next week is Championship Thursday, and Hogan will decide who's going to face Jeff Hardy for the title out of four guys. And he says he's got a three-way later tonight to determine the second person. The first one's going to be James Storm, and the third is Mr. Anderson because he's been on track lately. <laughs> I mean, really? So, Joe Park shows up, and he wants to talk to Hulk Hogan in private. No cameras or anything. Um, Robbie E. with Rob Terry versus Samoa Joe for the TV title. I guess Jersey Shore is back on television, so let's bring Robbie E. back out there. It's in its final season, so what next for this poor guy? And it is kind of funny he's even getting a title shot when we haven't seen him in a while. But Robbie T. holds Joe's leg when he goes for the muscle buster, so Joe dives out on him. He gets in the ring, hits the muscle buster on Robbie E., and then chokes him out. Rob Terry gets in the ring and tries to attack Joe. Joe chokes him out too, and that was it. So I thought this made Joe look really strong here, which is a great thing. Hopefully they'll continue to push him. A photo shoot with Tara and Jesse from Big Brother. And then we get Tara with Jesse versus ODB, who is on the phone with Eric Young. Um, she talks to Eric Young at certain times during the match. She leaves him on hold so that while she's wrestling Tara, she can pick up the phone and talk to him. 
this one was really weird. Tara gets distracted by Jesse. She's kissing him, and ODB hits the bam for the win. But they were both distracted this entire match. So it was just, this was strange. Tess Mocker comes out clapping. We get Styles and Angle backstage talking about facing each other in the three-way with Daniels. Kid Cash and Gunner versus Chavo and Hernandez. This was a okay match here. Hernandez pounces on Cash, and Chavo hits the crossbody for the win. Joe Park asks Hulk Hogan and Sting for the shot at Devon, or not Devon, but a shot at the Aces. And Hogan says, "No, there's too many of them." And Park says, "I just want one." <laughs> Man, if they can do this and Hogan can say, all right, I'll give you one. or I mean, if, if Hogan is booking them in matches, then they really just hurt themselves by getting full access. And if he can book them in matches, couldn't he just make it a bunch of handicap matches against the Aces and Eights or something? i got to stop thinking about this. Um, so he says he just wants one. Bully Ray comes in and asks to be the guy to go up against Devon and Hogan says that he's going to pick him as the fourth guy to possibly face Jeff Hardy next week in Championship Thursday. And tonight, Devon is stinks. So this kind of upsets Bully. And I find it funny that they're fighting for a chance to be considered to face Jeff Hardy. It's all up to Hogan. He's got Storm. He's got Anderson for God knows why. Bully Ray. And these three guys are having a triple threat match just to be considered by Hulk Hogan and hope they don't get eliminated. That's just ridiculous to me. Hardy comes out. It's his celebration party. He gets confetti. And just like I said in the Bound for Glory video I did, he brought back the face belt. <laughs> I couldn't believe they did this again. I could not believe it. It's silver this time, though, um, which is at least a little bit of an improvement. But after all the work Bobby Roode did, building that title back up they put it back on that I mean they bring it back to the face belt and that's just oh my god it's so stupid I mean it's just so stupid and just a complete waste of money so Austin Aries comes out he's got some cookies and balloons the balloons fly away and Hardy rudely slaps the cookies out of his hand Austin Aries really didn't do anything at this point he was being nice, and Hardy just slaps the cookies down. What an ass. So the fans chant Hardy, and Austin Aries says, where were you people in Phoenix when they were chanting my name, which is true. And Austin Aries spits on Hardy's new title. <laughs> that was funny. And Hardy tries to give him the twist of fate, and Austin Aries escapes. Christopher Daniels says, the Abaltini is always half full, and he will beat Kurt and AJ tonight. Um, we get Styles, Angle, and Daniels in the triple threat match. Something about Kazarian missed his flight. I don't really know, uh, which is why I wasn't in his corner. And Christopher Daniels has a new tattoo, or he just wrote Rebel across his chest with a marker. But this was an alright match. Angle wins with the Angle Slam. AJ refuses to shake Kurt's hand after, so Kurt Angle versus AJ Styles is going to be another feud. Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan see Hogan. Hogan tells Joey Ryan to step it up to 97% and we'll be good. And Joey Ryan says, done. To me, this sounds like Joey Ryan is not a bad guy. He's a good guy. He just got screwed over on the gut check. And when it's not these judges, Al Snow and Taz, um, he's actually not bad. <laughs> and Hogan asked Matt Morgan why he was running around kicking people in the face, and he says it's because Hogan told him he'd make him a household name. Never going to happen. Um, Storm comes out. He reads his bucket list, which is beating Bobby Roode, drinking beer, and winning back his title. Roode comes out and says that Storm needed him to rise to the next level, and he will always be the better man. Storm super kicks him. This was a good segment. I like this. Then we get the main event, Devon vs. Sting, lasted way too long, was really boring, could care less about this. Sting gets Devon and the Scorpion Deathlock, the Aces attack, the TNA guys attack, they brawl around for a little bit, Bully Ray runs out with the bat, show's over. 
And that was it. Just kind of an average show this week. I'm not really saying it's bad because there wasn't a lot of stupid stuff. It just was kind of disappointing match-wise. Matches were just okay. And Devon vs. Sting should never be a main event. But I did think it was kind of weird that Bully Ray wants Devon so bad, yet when they were all out there fighting the aces, he didn't even show up until later with the baseball bat. You would think he would be the first one out there, so that was kind of strange. But I know, of course, TNA, they're going to have to keep these guys apart because they're going to build to Bully versus Devon at some point, um, unless they have some type of swerve planned, but... Anyway, that's my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling. Hope you guys liked this video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments below, and thanks for watching.